Welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to be talking about complexities with projections in event sourcing. As long as you keep things simple and you have one event stream and you produce one projection on the back of that event stream and things are relatively simple, there is not much else to do. Chances are things will get a little bit more complex. You're going to have complex projections. For example, you can have a post and then a user in that post. So those are two different related entities two different event streams and you have to construct a projection that involves more than one event stream. And that's the complexity. We're trying to deal with building projection out of multiple streams. The solution to that complexity for me and from what I've seen falls down into two categories. You either have to deal with it at the read time or you have to deal with it at the write time. I don't know if there are better names for these, but I'm going to refer to them as hard read. So you're basically going to do something complex at the read time and hard write. So you're going to do something complex when you're trying to write to the database. We're going to go over the examples of what exactly you have to do at read and write and why it's hard. But I'm also going to put a couple of diagrams with the examples that we're going over. So, you know, uh, nice little images, pay attention to those. And let's go ahead and take a look at some sample code. Here is my base components that I'm working with, just an event and the document store. I'm throwing the event store and storing events out the window. I'm assuming we're doing that correctly. And what I'm going to focus on here is actually creating the snapshot. And this is going to serve mostly as pseudocode, right? You can balance the joining that I'm going to show how to do between the database and the server side. And you should be balancing this out yourself for what makes more sense in your situation. Here's the infrastructure that we are going to be going over for the hard read scenario. We're going to be taking a look at Twitter and specifically posts and users. An event for creating posts, right? We create a post with some text. Don't worry, there are no attributes here. This is just to represent the event. We are omitting the information that comes with it. And then there is an event for the user to be able to update his avatar. This can also be the username, the handle, whatever. We then have the two projections that are going to be produced on the back of these two events, one for the post and one for the user. For the hard write example, we're going to be looking at a YouTube video and the way that it looks like on the admin panel in like a little thumbnail preview and then as a full video and what data is actually involved. The created event, we create the video, right? Nothing too crazy viewed, you know, a little bit of just an example event. You can view the video, you can like the video and the counter goes up and down, right? And then commented. So commented is a comment section event stream. So it grows separately from the video and each individual comment because they can have a sub comment thread. Those can have their own streams as well. We're not going to go that deep, but primarily this example is meant to illustrate that there isn't an infinite amount of uh, projections that we need to update, but the amount is rather known. So for example, if we create a video, we know we need to create these three projections and commented. If somebody comments under a video, we know we only need to update this in one place or however many, if we have some kind of video analytics view, we just update the counter on that as well. Let's talk about what hard read and write scenarios involve for the read scenario, because it's a Twitter post with a user behind it. What we have to do is we essentially have to perform a join. So the post is containing a reference to the user rather than including the user inside the post itself. That means if the user has created 100 posts and then decides to update his avatar, we only need to update one projection, the user projection, instead of going and finding every post and then shoving the new user information into that post projection. And this is why it's a hard read because we have a reference and then we have to balance it. We either do two queries on the back end, the front end has to do two calls to the API, or we do a join in our database. And that's essentially the complexity that's involved there. So when is the correct time to apply the hard reading strategy? And my perspective, it's essentially when you have a one to many relationship or many to many relationship in this situation, it's a user with many posts. You don't know how many posts the user is going to create. If you can't predict it, you don't want to end up in a situation where you're testing on development and it's like, okay, updating my profile when I have five posts works. And then your system grinds to a halt when you're in production, when somebody just spammed like a gazillion tweets and then updates their profile and your system is just going tick, 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 trying to update each post one by one. So having a reference there is, you know, a safety measure for your system. On the other side of the argument with the hard write, 
you're essentially trying to avoid doing anything too complicated on the read scenario. You're still trying to preserve that single read. Just get me the data I want to display. And you're able to do that because you understand how many projections you are actually going to be updating. That number isn't changing or growing. It is essentially limited to your business requirements. Therefore, you can safely estimate and prepare those projections accordingly. Even though they overlap multiple streams, it is quite comfortable and safe to do them on the right side. Here we have a minimal API example. Let me write these up again. Remember, this is more pseudocode. You are going to be balancing these operations between your UI, backend, different components, database, etc. I'm going to do a simple operation. I just want to list a bunch of posts. So I have this convenient operation of listing all my documents by a type. I now also want to go ahead and grab all the users. So we do something along the lines of this. Again, this can be a database join. This is the last time that I'm going to repeat it. This is pseudocode. We grab all the posts. Based on all the posts, we grab all the relating users. And then finally return that to result. I hope the complexity is pretty apparent. As soon as we are not just fetching a document by an identifier, now we're basically having to say we got a bunch of posts, uh, let's get all the users and maybe some kind of other related entities. It's already hard. We have to remember something is somewhere. It's not just the thing that we're working with. If we're using hard read, that makes the right side easier and we only have to update a single projection instead of multiple ones. Now for the hard write example, we're essentially going to produce a comment. I don't have a command object, so this is my command or a form. Look at these two parameters as such. We're doing something pretty standard, grabbing something from the database and then mutating it. As I've said before, this operation comes after the events. We assume we have handled that part correctly. Don't actually have an update operation, so let's go ahead and put it in there. Something like this and make sure we await on it. Looking at this, this is pretty straightforward. The important thing that we have to understand here is that this projection is being built asynchronously. There are many other projections that need to be updated when this event of commented happened. You have to create your own tooling, which allows you to say, these are my projections and they should be triggered when these events happen. So when commented happens, we define something like an iHook interface, which listens on the commented event and all the projections that need to be updated when the commented event happens, they implement the iHook commented as well as all the other events that they want to process. That is one verbose way to do it. You can also do it based by convention. You're just going to give methods with the event that it could accept and then use reflection to basically say, OK, I can see this object is tagged with I projection interface. Therefore, I'm going to scan its methods. I can see it accepts this method automatically try to update this projection from the database, etc. If you're asking me why am I not showing it in this video, because there's going to be a separate video where we're going to build this actual asynchronous projector, the thing that listens on the events from the database and builds up projections asynchronously. Fun, right? Nevertheless, hopefully you did enjoy this little video. Again, it was meant to shine the light on the problem of building a projection out of multiple event streams. So your balance is between doing something complex on the read side or doing something complex on the right side. If interaction between your projections and streams is unknown, use references and handle the complexity on the read side. If you're bound by use cases and you know your exact limits, do the hard updates on the right side. But obviously everything depends, so make sure this advice fits your scenario. Otherwise, you know, think of something. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, leave a like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thank you very much to all my patrons who are choosing to support me. If you're not supporting me yet, what are you doing? Are you watching this video for free? Click the link in the description, man. Hope you're having a good day and see you in my other videos.